Hey guys, happy Flower Friday. Today we are going to be planting sweet peas. Now, typically by this time, by Easter, I usually have sweet peas blooming, but the rain, need I say more? Could not get up into the cottage garden to get much planting done. It was all soggy and soppy and wet. So now's the time to plant them. I've already got them growing. I did a video uh, a few months ago where I planted them or sowed the seeds in root trainer. So let's take a look at those. Now they've been growing pretty slowly because of the cold weather. Ooh, they need some water as well. So these are root trainers. The roots are growing out the bottom. So what this does is this trains the roots to grow deep. And that's what legumes, including sweet peas, need. So we can open these up. We can take a look and see they go right down those grooves and straight down to the bottom. You can also now take these out of here without much disturbance to the roots. The one thing I have found difficult about these root trainers is they're a little bit difficult to keep watered well. So I might set them in water next time uh, to water them because it feels like there's not enough surface area here for the water to get past the plants and into the soil. This is the first time I've used root trainers. Usually I just sow the seeds directly into the ground. But if you live in a cold winter climate, now is the time to get your sweet peas started. So I will link that video to where I sowed these seeds down below. Now, sweet peas need some kind of support. They need uh, something to climb on and they can grow six or more feet tall. So I'm going to be putting a couple of teepees up into the cottage garden and I'm going to make those out of material I have growing here on our property. I have purposely not taken these eucalyptus trees out because they are perfect for coppicing. Coppicing just means when you cut down uh, a large tree and all of these sprouts, saplings, come up from the side of it. You can see there's all different sizes in here. Now, depending on where you are, uh, hazel trees, willow trees, there's different types of trees. We can't grow either one of those here, but fortunately eucalyptus is a good option for us. So I'm gonna get my chainsaw, I'm gonna cut a few of these down, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make my teepee. And I got this idea of fashioning the teepee in this way. It's a cottage garden, first of all, so I wanted it to look cottagey. But um, I got our book by Sarah Raven. I don't remember the name of it, I'll put it up here. And I was reading that this winter, and I learned more in this book than I've learned from any book in a long time. So let me go get the chainsaw, we'll cut some down, put it together and we'll plant our sweet peas. So you wanna choose branches that are about the same diameter and thickness. And we're gonna want seven feet. A foot will be driven into the ground maybe. Probably not, more like six inches, but if we can get this between six and a half and seven feet tall. Now it depends on the type of wood you're using. Eucalyptus tends to bend pretty easily in terms of the main trunk. So using the tippy top branches are going to be kind of floppy so we're going to use these these bottom sturdy branches so i'm six feet so i'll cut them about right here and i'll use this for something else Now these are a bit of an overkill on the thickness, but like I said, they bend easily, so better to use the thick part than the super thin part. The next step is to remove the leaves from all of these, not the branches, just the leaves. Fortunately, this is really easy to do. Gloves might make it a little less painful. Now, full disclosure, I've never done this exact way before. Usually I'm using bamboo K 
canes. But I really like the look this gives. It's very cottagey, very rustic. So if you have that type of garden, I think you might like the way this looks too. So this is the final product. So following Sarah's instructions, she says to mark out a three foot diameter circle on the ground and then push these in to the ground about eight inches. Now, these are quite thick and this ground is new and not the softest. I just put four or five inches of compost on top. So we may not get to drive it that far, let's see. Oh yeah, not at all. All right, so I'm gonna dig little holes and put these in. I'm gonna use my auger and that should go a little faster. And that's it. Just kidding. Now I can't remember if this was in her instructions or not, but I'm gonna take some wire. This is just 16 gauge galvanized wire. And we're gonna just take these and gather them at the top. I think she has, I think Willow and probably Hazel, they probably have a lot longer branches to kind of wrap them together with. So we're not gonna be able to do that. We're gonna have to bring in some wire to just really get them sturdy. And you feel that it's about straight up and down, it's not leaning, then really cinch that wire in hard. And twist it good and tight. Now it still moves, so I'm gonna just weave some of this wire through all of the, the little posts. Well, not all of them, but at least through some of the center ones, through the center, pull it through, Maybe wrap it around one like this. Just kind of really make a, a knotted mess of everything up here. And then it should hold together pretty well. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna pack the soil in around them. All right, now here we go with the questionable part in terms of am I gonna be able to do this? Um, so basically you start at the bottom and you're going to gather some of these branches and we're going to work it around and you're going to twist them. We're going to go up in a spiral pattern, just collecting more branches and twisting them in and always keep twisting the same way. I think the more branches you have, the thicker obviously this is going to be. Now obviously you gotta do these when they're first cut down. Once they get, you know, hardened up, dried out and brittle, it's not gonna work. And I think she said for those of you who are using willow or hazel, this is the perfect time of year to do this because the sap is rising and it makes them very flexible. What do you know, this is actually kind of working. I love these very, rustic, natural looking way of doing things, especially up here in the cottage garden. I think it just adds to the theme and the story of it. Now that I'm into this, this is actually kind of relaxing. So I started running out of twigs in this area and the tops of these had a lot more of this long, whippy growth on it. And so I'm gonna try to see if I can weave these in and have it just kind of look seamless as it goes around like these were already there. Yeah, I think that'll work. Now it might seem so silly to some people who, you know, could throw up four or five bamboo canes and plant their sweet peas, but as I always say, the magic is in the details. And when you have a cottage like this, you want it to feel magical.
And then whenever it starts to get a little skimpy right here, just start a little bit back, kind of stick that stick in there. And then just add the bulk. This really isn't difficult. I thought it would be a lot harder than this. I hope it's not coming across as difficult on camera. I think you just have to do it to see that it's completely doable. See, as you add, as you pass these branches, just weave them in. And this is not only just a decorative thing, it's gonna give stability to the whole structure. It's also gonna give the, the sweet peas something to hold on to as they grow. And I don't think the spaces between these have to be perfect. After all, it's supposed to be rustic. Now I'm getting up here to the top where there's a lot of branches built in and ready for me. I don't have to weave as many in. And these top ones, I'm just gonna weave through here to just hold it in place. I'm just gonna tidy things up here trim off any of these that weren't needed. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that. And remember, this could last two or three years, so we're not just doing this for a few months. I like it. Okay, this next bit, you do whether you are growing it up a teepee, like this, or bamboo canes, or whether you're growing it on a fence or a trellis, these little dead sticks are going to give the runner, the uh, tendrils, these sweet peas are gonna grow tendrils, and that's gonna be to grab onto things. Well, it's gonna be hard for them to grab onto something like this. So instead, just at the base of each one of these, we're just gonna put some sticks, just like this. And that is just going to give them something to get them started, kind of like training wheels. So it should look something like that. All right, now it's time to plant the sweet peas. So I've got two different kinds. I've got Millie Real Stone, and I've got Arrow One. And I've got, I've got about 24, 25 plants, about the same of each. So, so there's six uh, main canes or branches. So we'll plant two at the bottom of each. Now I'm gonna plant every other one a different variety. So there'll be a mix on this trellis. And I'll do another TP over there and do another one. And I think I'm gonna water these first because they're kind of dry and I think it's when you open those, they're gonna fall apart. All right, so just two at the base of each post. I put some Neptune's Harvest crab and lobster and kelp meal in there. Come off to a good start. Pinch out the tips. When you pinch out the tips of these, it's going to cause more lateral growth to make more stems to grow up the uh, structure and therefore more blooms. So I'm gonna take an arrow wand and I miss rinse real stone. Well, I knew there was some slug and snail damage on some of the leaves, but I had no idea that they went ahead and pinched out the tops of almost all of these for me. I wondered why they were so short after that much growing time. Get the mulch out of the way.
that's that. They're pretty easy plants to grow. They do like moisture, so don't let them dry out. And they should grow pretty fast now that the weather is warming up. So they're gonna scramble up these little sticks and they're gonna find their way. Once they get about a foot tall, then they really take off in growth. I'm gonna fertilize them every two weeks with Neptune's Harvest. Um, you could use tomato and veg or the rose and flower. I'm gonna use the rose and flower. It's got a little bit more high phosphorus for the blooms. Definitely going for the blooms when you're planting sweet peas. Now, to keep them producing, once they start to bloom, start cutting them. This is one of those plants that the more you cut the blooms, the more they're gonna produce. And if you stop cutting the blooms, they're gonna set their seed and die and think they're done with their job. Now, typically here in our climate, we sow these in the fall. Uh, I didn't get around to it this year. Usually they will grow all fall and then they'll start blooming about March, April time. So I'm hoping that I will get a good fast growth out of these and we'll get lots of blooms before July when the weather really gets hot and they're not gonna have so much fun. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden today. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a friend, and I'll see you next time.